The loyal men and women of the Astra Militarum, or Imperial Guard for you older lot, are the real backbone, the real meat, literally in some cases, of the Imperium. So let's give them all their due respect today and take a look at five of their more impressive units from their 10th edition index. Now although the Astra Militarum have been struggling lately, the latest field manual which came in a few weeks ago has made some difference, although it's fair to say they're still not a top tier faction, but despite that they do have some cool powerful units that are performing quite well on the tabletop, and a few of them in particular I think are actually really quite stand out. So as always we're going to be taking a look at five units that in no particular order I really like the look of and that I think if you are building a slightly stronger, more competitive Astra Militarum list, you probably want to at least consider taking. And first up, as is his right of course, we have Lord Solar Leontis. He was 125 points before and he is still 125 points now, but he is still just really, really good. He brings you a fantastic, for a human anyway, stat line with a 12 inch move thanks to his horse Constantine, toughness 4, a 3 up save, a 4 up invulnerable save, a mighty 8 wounds, and a solid leadership of 6 plus. He does have the faction voice of command rule so he can dole out orders to the units around him, but rather than just one, Leontus can issue three orders and he can also crucially issue them to all Astra Militarum units not just regiment units. So he can really buff up and improve almost everything in an Astra Militarum army and give them some of those useful order abilities like move, move, move or take aim to just help boost their usefulness on the battlefield. On top of that, he also comes with two very, very strong abilities himself. The first, the Lord Solar, just grants you a bonus command point in each of your command phases when he's on the battlefield. It is nice, it is simple, it is strong, and it's always gonna be useful to have. And then he also has the Collegiate Astralex, which lets you, after both players have deployed, choose up to three of your units and redeploy them. And you can even move them back into strategic reserves if you want with this. And this is just really, really powerful. It lets you get the drop on an opponent, you know, making them think you have a really weak flank and then moving three of your strongest units to it after they've deployed, or just totally moving some of your vulnerable units to the other end of the battlefield. You really can massively mess up your opponent's game plan with this rule and it's just in itself going to have a huge impact on pretty much every game. It will seriously make your opponent just second guess themselves during deployment which I mean before the game even begins can net you a huge huge advantage. So both of those abilities are really really powerful and all the stuff that we've covered already almost in my opinion makes Leontus worth bringing just for that. But then of course he also has some damage output himself too, although it's fair to say being just a human still it's nothing terrifying. But he can in a pinch shoot his pistol Soul's Righteous Gaze which is a 12 inch range with 2 strength 8 minus 2 AP 2 damage shots and then in melee his sword Conquest is 6 attacks, it hits on 2s and it is strength 6 minus 2 AP 2 damage. And then he also has two extra attacks from Constantine. So it's nothing super, super amazing, but still six strength, six two damage attacks will net him around two dead Marines when he swings. So he isn't exactly awful at fighting off small harassment units or going into toughness three units like fire warriors or Eldari units. So he can, if nothing else, I think help make another unit he joins less bad in melee, even if he himself doesn't make them amazing in any way. What I also really like about Leontis is he can join quite a lot of units. All the regimental infantry squads, Rough Riders and Kasakin, he can get some solid extra wounds to just protect him, or with something like the Rough Riders, he can actually get a reasonably cheap and reasonably scary counterpunch unit that can go into quite a lot of things really well and do a surprising amount of damage, especially on the charge, 
that your opponent might not be expecting. Scout Sentinels are up next and they actually got a price bump in the latest field manual going up to 60 points from their previous 50 which does seem like a fairly big jump for them but they are still just so good and so I would say almost fundamentally important to an Astra Militarum list. I still think they deserve a spot in this list and also a spot in pretty much every Astra Militarum army at the moment. They have a solid stat line with a 10 inch move, toughness 7, 3 up save and 7 wounds and they have some brilliant utility thanks to their 9 inch scout move as well so they really can get around the board quickly and be exactly where you need them to be pretty much from turn 1 and then on top of that they also have a solid selection of weapons they can be reasonably durable platforms for things like las cannons or auto cannons or missile launchers and then with a hunter killer missile as well they can actually do some reasonably solid anti-tank and anti-vehicle damage for their cost but the reason scout sentinels are so so good is their ability daring recon and what this does is it lets you choose an enemy unit within 18 inches of your sentinel and visible to it and then for that phase you do this in the shooting phase i should say but for that phase you get to re-roll hit rolls of one against that enemy unit for all astra militarum units so that one scout sentinel being near an enemy unit essentially grants you army-wide re-roll ones to hit. And this is just so important for the guard. With most of their stuff hitting on fours, it does make a big difference to your accuracy. But more importantly, there aren't actually a huge number of ways to get re-rolls to hit of any kind for the Astra Militarum. So having a few cheap units that you can easily include in your army to target an enemy unit within 18 inches and pretty much give you army-wide reroll hit rolls of one is so important and so powerful for the Astra Militarum and I just think that for a mere 60 points a few scout sentinels really will if nothing else be such a strong force multiplier for you even if you discount their own weapons I just genuinely think they are worth bringing in a couple in every single list even at 60 points. Up next we have a very multi-purpose unit in Gaunt's Ghosts. These guys were already a solid pick before when they were 115 points. Now they've dropped 15 points down to 100 flat. They are just even better. They have a lot of rules. They've got fights first, they've got infiltrators, they have stealth and most importantly they have lone operative. So they can just be super good at deploying around near an objective and being incredibly difficult for your opponent to get rid of unless they get really close to them. Although they're only toughness 3 so they're not super super tanky they do have a reasonable number of wounds. They've got 3 wounds on Gaunt and 2 for each of the ghosts in the squad so there is 13 wounds to get through and yes whilst they will die quickly thanks to that toughness 3 they can very reliably just sit back on a home objective and use some of their longer range weapons like Bragg's autocannon and Larkin's long laz to pump some three and four damage shots into the enemy. But then what makes them really key and really clutch is that they have some crazily good movement shenanigans with their covert stealth team rule. And what this means is that they can essentially up and move themselves to anywhere on the battlefield nine inches away from an enemy as long as they are not in engagement range of anything. So you can move them around from objective to objective or from board corner to board corner for doing secondaries or scoring points or just to get them away from a scary melee unit that may be bearing down on them. They are just super cheap, really slippery to pin down and tie down by your opponent and they can actually kill reasonably well. They've got four three damage shots from the autocannon and one four damage shot from the long laz so they can add a bit of high damage stopping power to your army as well. So again, I just think like the Scout Sentinels, these guys are a solid, almost must take pick in an Astra Militarum army at the moment. In the fourth spot, we go back to more humble beginnings with the dear old guard transport of the Chimera. This got a huge boost in usefulness in the latest field manual. It dropped to a very, very reasonable 70 points, which when you consider that nets you a toughness 9, 11 wound, 3 up save units that can move 10 inches and transport 12 infantry models 
is just a fantastic deal. It's got a really great profile for that price and it gives your squishy infantry models some much needed protection as well as pretty much doubling their move in a lot of cases. So you can much more reliably get around the board. You will have more infantry models alive to get around the board and get them onto objectives so you can score your points. I think for 70 points alone, those bonuses make it almost a worthwhile addition to most mobility focus lists. But then on top of that, it also has the very useful mobile command vehicle rule, which lets officers inside it throw orders around whilst they're safely tucked up inside of it, which really does help you to buff your army as you've got things moving up inside your Chimera. And then on the actual damage output front itself, it's got six Lasgun shots going up to 12 within 12 inches from the Lasgun array, and then also a choice of weapons to take. Personally, I like going for two heavy bolters, which gives you an extra six strength five, minus one AP, two damage shots on top of your las guns. And then on top of that, the Chimera also has the firing deck two rule, so you can get even more shooting out of it. And if you have a squad that has, say, a plasma gun or a melter gun or whatever inside it, then you get that firepower added to the mix as well. All whilst it is all safely tucked up inside that Toughness 9 Chimera chassis. It is just all round a brilliant transport now. For 70 points, it basically brings you an infantry squad's worth of shooting with extra durability and extra movement. And it's about the same price as an infantry squad. So I personally would be bringing at least a few of these to chuck some infantry squads or Kasakin squads in and then have them zip around the board to go and grab objectives and just keep your infantry models alive for as long as possible. Finally, in this list, we have a unit that got a really quite big cost reduction, going from a whopping 240 points down to just a mere 205. And that is the Tank Commander, another really brilliant HQ option for the Guard now. It is a character that can give out orders, which is always really useful, but he's also extremely durable and really rather killy. He gets to choose from any of the options that the regular Lehman Rust tanks have. I personally prefer the Demolisher Cannon. I still think that is the best gun for the Lehman Rust variants in general. But for 205 points, you get a Toughness 11, 13 wound model with a two up save. So he is very, very tanky to use an appropriate term. He can issue one order to a squadron unit. So that is other tanks and vehicles. So he does have that utility to him as well. And then of course, on the damage front, he's got that Demolisher Cannon. And the Demolisher Cannon is still a 24 inch range, strength 14, minus three AP, D6 damage gun that fires D6 plus three shots with blast. So it is still very, very mean and still very, very killy. Uniquely for the tank commander, this actually gets even better because with his special ability, death befitting an officer, he can, when he is destroyed, roll a dice and on a two plus, he gets to make one final shooting attack as if it's your shooting phase, so he can really go out with a bang. And firing your demolisher cannon, as well as potentially a las cannon and two multi-melters, can definitely let you avenge this unit by killing whatever managed to destroy you. So again, he is just very, very good. He got a significant points drop, and now that he is just over 200 points, I think he does bring you a great mix of durability, damage output, and utility from his orders. So he is definitely worth considering, especially I think if you are bringing a few other tanks alongside him so he can move up with them and buff them as they advance on the enemy. So that is it for the Astra Militarum. As I said, they're not doing spectacularly well at the moment, but they do still have some great units that I think, especially from the recent field manual, are really solid and that I think are well worth bringing if you are trying to put together a slightly stronger Astra Militarum list. But as always, I'd love to know what you think and what are your top five units from the Astra Militarum Index. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe for more Warhammer content from me. But until next time, I'll catch you later, guys.